So I talked about Kant's view on um, biology, uh, or at least a, an aspect of his view on biology in one of my videos yesterday, um, and discussed how he found um, this unique quality in an organic system which was not present in a mechanical system. Uh, that property basically being self-organization. A machine needs to be built from the outside by some kind of intelligent agent, usually a human being, um, whereas an organism grows itself from the inside out. Um, it is the cause of its own effect. Um, so there's a circular causality going on there. And, um, autopoiesis is the word that uh, Francisco Varela and Humberto Maturana coined basically to refer to what Kant originally recognized. Um, but something else that Kant recognized in organisms as sort of an intrinsic quality of their self-organization um, was purpose. Um, but here's the twist. With Kant, that purpose could not be assigned to the system itself. Rather, it was a regulatory principle of our judgment of the system. So in other words, Kant thought in order for human beings to understand living organisms, they needed to project purpose onto them, even though it may or may not be there in reality, because Kant, of course, had this duality, rather Cartesian duality, between the phenomenal world and the noumenal world, uh, the world that we experience and the world which underlies that experience. Um, because basically what Kant recognized is that life cannot be explained in terms of um, the Newtonian categories of thought, of space and time, and mechanical causality. Um, he recognized life was beyond uh, a Newtonian science's ability to comprehend. Um, there was more than atoms in a void when it came to living creatures. Um, and uh, Lucretius, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, um, he was a, an Epicurean in uh, you know, some of the ancient Greek schools of thought, um, and a materialist. He uh, really is, is one of the founders of what we call atomism today, where uh, all that is real are atoms in the void, but uh, Lucretius had this word Kleinemann, which he used to describe these vortexes of atoms which spontaneously um, arise in order to produce, well, you know, living organisms for one. And um, he, he recognized these as quite mysterious and didn't, I mean, I have to read more of, of, of what he wrote about what Kleinemann actually are, but it was sort of this anomaly in his system of atoms in the void in which he could not really account for. Um, but, so that's the territory I'm dealing with right now. Um, Kant recognized that life, any organism, is inherently purposeful, and it is self-organizing and self-causing. Um, but what he didn't fully understand, or at least he was reluctant uh, to assume, was that that was anything more than a regulatory principle of his own judgment. Um, that, in other words, he saw that attribute attributing a purpose to organisms as a projection of his mind, not something which was in the organism itself. Now, of course, if we, you know, bring this up to the, to the scale of human interactions, um, is it, would we say it's true that uh, I have to project purpose uh, onto you in order for you to have it? Um, you know, we might say that from my perspective, but I know that from your perspective, that's not true. That you have inherent purpose and and free will, free decision, free choice. I know that there is something that is like to be you that experiences purposes. So it would appear that in uh, it's obvious in the human case that this Kantian principle of always having to project purpose onto nature is somehow lacking. It's it, it can't be right. Um, and what I would like to do is extend this um, sense that purpose is constitutive of the object we're describing and not just a product of our description. I would like to extend that all the way down uh, to single-celled organisms. Um, and if I can succeed at that, 
I think I will then have to open the door to also recognizing inorganic uh, matter as purposeful in a, to a lesser degree as well. Um, but again, I'm kind of leaving that out of the picture for now while I try to work out this other half of the argument. Um, so I'm going to go read this paper that I was able to find on uh, my school's website, which is good because it would have been like 30 bucks otherwise. Uh, it's from the, the Journal of Phenomenology and the Cognitive Sciences. It's uh, Francisco Varela and uh, Andreas Weber. Life after Kant, Natural Purpose, and the Autopoetic Foundations of Biological Individuality. And um, I'll read the abstract so you can get an idea of what it's going to be about. You know, again, I haven't read it yet. I'm going to read it right now and probably post a video or two or three after I read it to uh, see what I thought. Because I think that Varela is going to try to do exactly what I just described, um, attribute purpose to the organization of an organism inherently rather than as Kant saw it as just a necessary projection of our rational mind <clears throat> um, in order for us to understand it. So let's read the abstract. This paper proposes a basic revision of the understanding of teleology and biological sciences. Since Kant, it has become customary to view purposiveness in organisms as a bias added by the observer. The recent notion of teleonomy expresses this as-if character of natural purposes. In recent developments in science, however, notions such as self-organization or complex systems and the autopoiesis of a viewpoint have displaced emergence and circular self-production as central features of life. Contrary to an often superficial reading, Kant gives a multifaceted account of the living and anticipates this modern reading of the organism even introducing the term self-organization for the first time. Our re-reading of Kant in this light is strengthened by a group of philosophers of biology, with Hans Jonas as the central figure, who put back on center stage an organism-centered view of the living, an autonomous center of concern capable of providing an interior perspective. Thus, what is present in Nusse and Kant, I guess that's Latin, or something for something, <laughs> finds a convergent development from this current of philosophy of biology and the scientific ideas around autopoiesis, two independent but parallel developments culminating in the 1970s. Instead of viewing meaning or value as artifacts or illusions, both agree on a new understanding of a form of imminent teleology as truly biological features, inevitably intertwined with the self-establishment of any identity of an identity which is the living process. And uh, I thought it was a rather neat coincidence that, uh, you know, I've been wondering whether Varela had ever read or been exposed to any of A.N. Whitehead's work. And uh, he actually quotes Whitehead at the beginning of uh, this paper here. Um, the clash of doctrines is not a disaster, it is an opportunity. So. I'm going to read this and uh, probably post a response to this video about uh, where it takes me.